Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, council meeting for April 2nd. I do ask, we have a number of people in the gallery, make sure your phones are set to vibrate or turned off, please. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, in the spirit of truth and reconciliation, we acknowledge the town of Edson is located on Treaty 6 territory, the traditional and ancestral lands of the Nikawak, Soto, Siksika, Pakani, Kainai, Dene, Nakota Sioux, and the Otipamisawak Métis Nations. We honor the knowledge of this land, the elders and youth which gather here, and our ancestors who have gathered here for centuries. Council, can I get a motion, please, that the agenda for the April 2nd, 2024 regular meeting of council be adopted as presented? And Councilor Chouinard, would you like to make that motion? I'll make the motion to adopt the agenda. Thank you very much. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? That motion is carried unanimously. Can I get a motion, please? The minutes of the March 19th, 2024 regular meeting of council be adopted as presented. Go ahead, Councillor Chachka. I so move. Thank you, Councillor Chachka. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? Motion is carried unanimously. We have no public hearings, no delegations, no reading of bylaws. Uh, we are going to move down to reports from administration. Can I get a motion, please? The council authorize administration to submit an application to become a designated host community under the Alberta Advantage Immigration Program. Go ahead, Councillor Bevan. I'll make it so. Thank you, Councillor Bevan. And we have presenting tonight our Economic Development Officer, Morgan Roberts. Welcome, Morgan. Thank you, Mayor Zara. Good evening. Uh, thank you for uh, being here tonight. So we're here to talk about the Rural Renewal Stream. So the Rural Renewal Stream supports the attraction and retention of newcomers to rural Alberta through community-driven approach that supports local economic development needs and contributes to the growth of the community. Uh, rural municipalities with populations of under 100,000 can apply to become host communities and play an active role in screening and endorsing candidates. Businesses facing staffing shortages that they cannot fill locally will work with their own to, to recruit foreign workers. Once nominated, temporary foreign workers can qualify to work while they wait for a decision on their permanent residence application. Individuals must have one year's worth of work experience in the same NOC code in order to apply for the program. The number of available spots for the program is handed down from the federal government through Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada. They provide an allotment of spots for each province, and each province distributes them differently. In Alberta, there are four streams for foreign workers who are living and working in Alberta, or those that plan to live and work here. Tourism and Hospitality, Alberta Opportunity Stream, Alberta Express Entry Stream, and the Rural Renewal Stream. In addition, there are four streams for entrepreneurs who plan to live in Alberta or to buy and start a business in the province. The Rural Entrepreneur Stream, the Graduate Entrepreneur Stream, Farm Stream, and the Foreign Graduate Entrepreneur Stream. They're divided into two different sections, the non-express entry system and the express entry system. Non-express entry streams are the Alberta Opportunity Stream, which is currently not taking on any more additional registrations at this time, the Rural Renewal Stream, and all four of the Entrepreneur Streams. The number of allocations for 2023 in all of these programs amounts to 5,850, with Rural Renewal Stream amounting to just under 1,000 annually, and that's for the entire province. However, with the Opportunity the Alberta Opportunity Stream closed, these spots may be reallocated. The Express Entry Stream uh, had 3,900 allocations in uh, 2023, and that pathway consists of family connection and, and occupation in demand, accelerated TETH pathways, pathways, dedicated healthcare pathway, and select priorities, which are construction, agriculture, hospitality, and tourism. No numbers have been set out for 2024 allocations from the federal government at this time. And there are 34 rural municipalities and partner regions across rural Alberta that are currently host communities of the RRS. 
Okay, how did we get here? In late 2022, the town of Edson applied to be a host community. They were early adopters, um, and there were no best practices really to model our program after. 86 endorsement letters were written by the town of Edson. The rules around the Rural Renewal Stream Program were very loose, and the province left the management details to municipalities to figure out on their own. Without having consistent management throughout the province, there were multiple shell companies set up to take advantage of the program. Edson made the difficult decision in summer 2023 to pause the program. At that time, they no longer had the capacity to run it effectively. I started in the fall of 2023 and was tasked to look into the program. Immediately, there were concerns brought to my attention by local business owners who were experiencing staffing shortages. Businesses talking about cutting hours, uh, shutting doors due to not having enough staff. Daily, I received dozens of phone calls and emails asking the municipality to go back on the program. Local businesses have spoken and they want this program. In order to do this correctly, the town of Edson had to learn what was working and what wasn't. I spoke with 32 municipalities on how they ran the program, the good, the bad, the tales of immense success, and the heartbreaking horror. I spoke with municipalities that did it well, that did it poorly, and those that learned along the way. The program isn't perfect, but by learning from other municipalities, we can put the proper checks and balances in play to make the most of it for the local business community that are crying out for this program. I wanna be clear that we have to apply for the program um, and it will be scored on how the community can handle the influx of newcomers. The department needs support and administration has come up with a plan to utilize a part-time administrative assistant role already employed and budgeted within the town. So there is no additional cost to going on this program for taxpayers. We require interested businesses, business owners to want the program to open full-time, pardon me, uh, there have to be open full-time permanent positions that have been able to be unfilled by local job seekers. A business plan is required and a welcoming process for individuals that we bring into our community. The application can take about eight weeks to process. So this slide here shows just sort of the um, progression of things that will need to happen in order to get to this point. We are looking for program success that requires implementing best practices and lessons learned across the province. That means active business engagement needs to be taken into consideration. Thoughts around residency requirements need to be taken into consideration. Limits on the number of applications that businesses can submit. Uh, introducing an admin fee to business owners to offset the work required to vet applications. Realistic timelines with monthly application limits and minimum salary requirements for positions. And with these best practices in place, we think we can be successful in this program. So tonight we ask for the motion to endorse the application to the program and include the letter of support that is required to move forward. Thank you for your presentation, Ms. Roberts. Council, we will open the floor to questions. Go ahead, Councillor Taylor. Yeah, through the mayor to uh, administration and council and, and to the members of the gallery, um, uh, my position on this is very simple. I'm, I'm very supportive of this program. Um, uh, people will ask, you know, should the town of Edson be in the immigration business? Uh, we're not getting in the immigration business. We're in the business of getting people to move to Edson to work business. And this is one facet of doing that. So it's very simple, right? Um, you outline the best practices, uh, which I think you know you th thoroughly and comprehensively went through uh, other municipalities to find out uh, what works best and what can work best here. So I'm happy to see that. Um, and we need workers. I think the people here tonight are for this purpose. We need workers. We need people employed in Edson, uh, people that are going to come here, purchase homes, send their kids to school, and everybody wins at this. So uh, my only question 
is the administration fee. I understand why the administration fee is there, um, and it's to deter any fraudulent individuals for wanting to circumvent the system. And what are, what are we looking at in terms of a, a, an administration fee uh, moving forward? Uh, through Mayor Zahara. At this point, we're looking at a $500 administration fee, and that fee is to be paid by the businesses that are making application to the program. Uh, that fee is not to be passed along to any of the individuals. Thank you. Councillor Schoenard. Hi, yes, through the mayor to Morgan. Just a comment, um, I'm like the Councillor Taylor was, very in favor of because too, mu too many times in this town, someone's starting a business, and we've seen so many times fail, why aren't you opening? I can't get staff. So I'm in favor of it. It's um, welcoming people to Edson. And Councilor Taylor already asked my other question, so I can just say I'm in favor, and that would be it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Chachka. Thanks, uh, through the chair to council and uh, uh, admin. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Roberts, for the presentation. Um, I, I am supportive of this, and um, if council recalls, there was a... Uh, community Futures Triage Report that uh, was pre presented to us, I think it was early last year. Um, and uh, two of the things on the list uh, there, that were quite high for our community were the availability of skilled workers and the availability of unskilled workers. So um, both of those were, were high on our list. And um, this, and I think that was why we initially went with the, the previous program. Um, I am very uh, pleased to hear that there are some best practices and some changes to uh, the program um, for, for everybody's benefit, for the employees, the employer, as well as the town. I think there's a triple win with that. Um, and that's really important that it's not, I think, all hung out on, on one, one of those organizations or, or people. Um, so I'm uh, glad to see this brought forward and um, pleased that we can uh, provide employees for our, our businesses as well. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chachka. Councillor Bevan, go ahead. Uh, through the Mayor de Morgan, I'm glad you brought this forward because I was in support of it before, and I know there is businesses in town right now that do have a renewal stream here, and they're being supported by another province to come to work here in that, which is great, and I know there's a lot of them here. I did get a lot of comments of um, if we're going to bring it back, and I told them that it was unfortunate we had to cancel it, but we would bring it back, and now we brought it back. And I, I know there's a lot of businesses out there that if we didn't do something, they may cut back on our hours, or they may even close their doors. And if they close their doors, then that means we lose businesses downtown, in our, in our town. And like Peter Taylor says here, Councilor Taylor says, we could lose families or whatever, but we would like to have them to stay here in town. So I'm definitely in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bevan. Any further questions, comments, or concerns from Council? Uh, thank you for your presentation. And Councillor Chachka made up a very good point about the uh, triage report that was done. Um, it very clearly states that labor is uh, a very challenging thing for many of our businesses, particularly in the service industry. Um, I have spoken with many business owners um, from all facets, even industry, that are struggling to attract people uh, to our community. Um, and I know that when we closed the program down, um, it was a hit for a number of our, not just businesses, but some of our nonprofits as well, um, child care facilities, um, that sort of thing. Um, I, I have always been concerned about the fraudulent activities that have occurred uh, within this program. Um, luckily, our community hasn't been as impacted as some of the other ones, but I think with what we've learned since uh, we initially initiated this program, I think is going to go a long ways to mitigate that risk, and we can always reassess if there is um, future issues in regards to that. Um, so if, and sorry, you may, may have mentioned it in your presentation. So um, how many letters of support have you received um, and inquiries? Um, and how many, I guess, backlogged applications do we have at this point? Uh, so at this point, I've received over 100 letters of support. I received actually three more this afternoon. Um, we've had thousands of phone calls and support from both employers and from uh, job seekers, uh, people that are already within our community that are potentially going to have to leave if the program does not 
come back for them. Um, and then could you repeat the, the last segment? Uh, so how many, I know, I know there's a lot of people that have, when we cut off the program that were kind of in process, so do we have any backlog of applications or what are we looking at for uh, the amount of businesses that are looking to bring people through this program? So at this point, we would be looking at opening up the application process and we would not be going back to any former applications. Uh, the program itself at the provincial level has changed significantly since we were on uh, the rural renewal stream and change to make it more stringent so that it is uh, mitigating that risk that we talked about. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Chachka. Uh, through the chair to Ms. Roberts, uh, one more question. Um, do we need to ask for allocation to be a host community annually or when you are, um, once you've received that um, endorsement, then does that just continue until you decide not to or like do you have to reapply? Uh, through the chair. The application process is for approximately two years and it can be extended up to five years. Councillor Taylor. Uh, through the mayor to Ms. Roberts. Um, so we mentioned obviously it's been highlighted the need for the program, the amount, the, the you know, the amount of businesses that would, would like to have it, the urgency that's there. Um, and I see within the RFD that you can get this set up in about six months. Is that sort of still your timeline kind of thing? Or, um, you know, can it be done sooner? Or can the part-time staff be brought in sooner? I don't know the timeline in terms of that to get it up uh, sooner, sooner rather than later. Through the mayor. Uh, the program itself from the date of submission is approximately eight weeks for the application process to go through. At that end of the eight weeks, uh, the town could then start immediately if all the ducks were aligned. Councillor Pasichny. Yeah, through the mayor to Morgan. Definitely support the idea of anything that's gonna support our businesses. The, the one question I have is that by us approving this today, um, are we guaranteed to get this program or is that still on the, the decision at the provincial level? Through the mayor. Uh, it is not a guaranteed application. Uh, we have to uh, write a business plan. There was one written previously for our last application that can be adjusted to implement our new policies and procedures that we would want to uh, look at with regards to those best practices. Um, at that time, the province would have the opportunity to come back to us and ask us to tweak or to look at other available options. and. Uh, or they would have the option to just approve and move forward. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. Uh, Councillor Moore. Uh, through the mayor to Morgan. Uh, at this point, do we have any indication of how many, um, uh, from the letters you've received, how many um, uh, workers uh, they need as far as skilled and unskilled at this point? Uh, through the mayor. Uh, that's a very difficult question to answer, and I wouldn't be able to do it with much accuracy. I can tell you that uh, there are multiple businesses in town that have expressed the need, but I could not at this time give you a, a definite answer. In the past, we wrote 86 letters while we were on the program. We would expect, uh, given the parameters outlined in the RFD, that in that six months, there would be a maximum of 120 applications that could be written. Thank you. Council, any further questions, comments, concerns? Um, once again, uh, I'm in support. Uh, this aligns uh, directly with our strategic plan of fostering a robust, robust and adaptable economy. Um, and uh, the, the commentary that I've heard from the business owners over the last six months has been very clear that this is very much needed. Um, some businesses were in the process of starting up when we canceled this program, and it really has caused some havoc in terms of trying to keep them operating. So uh, I am in support and when you bring people in, they're, they're spending money in the community, they're renting, they're buying homes. Uh, so it's all good uh, in that regard, as long as we have those safeguards in place to ensure that that fraudulent activity does not occur. So with that, um, I will call the question. All those in favor? That motion is carried unanimously. And can I get a motion please? The council authorize the mayor to execute an endorsement letter 
for the town's application to the Rural Renewal Stream Program to be a designated host community under the Alberta Advantage Immigration Program. Go ahead, Councillor Moore. I so move. Thank you. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that motion is carried unanimously. Can I get a motion, please? The Council accept the Town of Edson's Economic Development Strategy as presented. Councillor Taylor. I move the Council accept the Town of Edson's Economic Development Strategy with the exception of Strategic Direction Number 2, which administration will review and adjust and bring back to Council at a later date. Okay. Uh, would you like to speak to that? Sure. Go ahead. So, um, through the mayor to administration to and to council, I um, we spoke about this at the committee of the whole meeting, and I wasn't sold on it then that that second um, strategy about creating a. Uh, um, sort of a health environment or a, a group of health businesses in town surrounding uh, the hospital using land to do that. Um, I, I just, I can't see the vision behind that. Um, we can't pretend we're something we're, we're not. Do we embrace like health and uh, those types of things in our community? Absolutely. Do we market ourselves as, as having uh, uh, lots of trail systems and outdoorsy sort of things to do? Absolutely. But to, to put a third of our economic development strategy into creating something that's just not there, I'm not sure if, I, if I'm sold on that. Um, we do have a lot of businesses that, that do these types of things. We have, we have yoga studios and we have fitness studios um, and, and dance studios. All, all these things are important, but lots of municipalities have these things. To say that we put our eggs in this basket is that's going to be the, the linchpin to improve our economy or get pe more people to move here, I'm not sold on. There are parts of that second strategy that, I, that I'm supportive. Uh, I'm in support of marketing ourselves as having these kinds of amenities. But to say that people will move here to start businesses to do those types of things, I'm just not sold on. And again, we can't, we can't pretend we're something else. We're, we're an oil and gas town. When I ask my students in class, how many of your parents are employed in the oil and gas industry, give or take it 70% or higher, kids raise their hand. You know, if I asked how many people are employed in the, in the health industry, not many, if any, in some classes. So to pretend we're something that we're not, I don't think is the right direction. Uh, again, there are parts of it that I agree with, um, but I can't sign off on, on spending a third of our EDO's time or a third of our economic development strategy on that particular strategy. I think there's too many challenges to that. And I fast forward 10 years, and I just don't see the, the long-term vision in that one strategy. So. Okay, thank you for speaking to your uh, motion. Uh, Ms. Roberts, did you have a presentation that you'd like to to do on that or um, we pretty much covered it, I think in our community the whole meeting so I would just direct uh, thank you through the mayor uh, I would just direct the RFD now includes what administration thinks the following priorities would be for the remainder of the 2024 year and moving into 2025 um, the idea to formalize and enhance local business retention and expansion while developing regional partnerships. This aligns with supporting local businesses, workforce attraction and retention efforts, and developing partnerships to leverage a regional approach to tourism. Uh, number two, increase communication levels with local businesses. This aligns with providing business programming targeting all cycles of the business. And number three, define and integrate clear paths to community investment. This aligns with focusing on laying the groundwork for investment readiness. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for that. So council, uh, Councillor Taylor made some comments there. Um, any comments, questions, concerns, thoughts? Go ahead, Councillor Schoenart. Uh, through the mayor to Councillor Taylor, I'm agreeing what you're saying, but what percentage should we set? Do you have something in mind? I hear what you're saying. I agree with it, but instead of one third, what what should we put? What are you what are you uh, what are you proposing? Councillor Councillor Taylor, go ahead. Uh, through the mayor to Councillor Chenard, 
Um, I'm asking that administration go back and rework the second strategy. The strategy create a regional hub for wellness and recreation. Um, when you say percentages, like we're going to be 100% when we're done this thing, but I would like that second strategy to be re reworked into something something else. Again, there are part of parts of things in there that I just don't think in terms of a long-term solution to economic development that it is worth the time investing in that. I think we'll get very little return out of it. Council, any further comments, questions? Councillor Moore. Uh, thank you uh, to the mayor, to, uh, to Peter. Um, yeah, I... Uh, Councillor Taylor. Councillor Taylor, yes. Um, I agree with you to, a, to an extent, but, uh, you know, I, I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't really look at uh, what things are going to be like in 10 years. And I, I think with the aging population, uh, this uh, could become a, a pretty big factor in the near future. That's all I have to say. I don't disagree with you, but I'm looking at my future crystal ball. All right. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Councillor Chachka. Thanks, uh, through the chair to Councillor Taylor. Um, I, I, I do recall when you spoke about or, you know, questioning this at, at the committee meeting uh, previously. Um, I, I think the name of it is, um, you know, uh, it sounds like we, we want to just encourage more yoga studios or something. Um, so, but, you know, when I, when I look in some of the meat and potatoes of it, um, it, it does kind of talk about our, um, uh, you know, our food system as well. Um, which is something that, um, you know, people around here are, are quite um, engaged with, um, you know, growing their own greenhouses and like herb gardens. And, and you know, there, there's quite a few people that are, are really into that. Um, and so I, I, I can see why you mean putting all your eggs in one basket. And I, and I don't know if you can force people to be in a certain location either, um, specifically close to the hospital. Um, but I, I think there, there is an opportunity um, that that is already of interest to our, our residents. Um, and, and I think that's where this is going off of because I, 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 I think the way it's worded, it, 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 um, it's a little bit questionable. Um, and my question back to Councillor Taylor is that um, it wasn't just administration that um, provided this report, it was contracted out. Um, so I, I'm not sure what, what exactly you're asking or what you would be proposing that they do, because it, it wasn't just administration. There was a, um, a contractor that, that provided this report. So mm -hmm. um, can you elaborate with, with your thoughts on that? Go ahead, Councillor Taylor. Well, uh, through the mayor to Councillor Chashka, I mean, we spoke about this community the whole, and even when the contractor spoke to this item, um, you know, he talked about, um, you know, uh, the more... Uh, um, uh, natural pathy uh, businesses and things like that. Um, those aren't, again, viable things that we can long-term in, invest in. I'm not saying that they're not important parts of the community. There are lots of businesses in town that do that. But in terms of putting those eggs there, I think that's a, that's a tough, tough approach. In terms of where we go now, I think we do have to look back at this. I would be I would be disappointed if we pass this tonight and then again we spent lots of time, more time, more energy into something where we may not see the results. People, and I agree with you, people that are, are you know, take part in these things and, and find hobbies with these things and, and, and do this on the side, but to do it as, as, as a third of our economic development, I, if, if, uh, if that was to occur, I think we'd already see, start seeing that within our community. We'd see the, the bigger effects of it already, and, and I, just, I just don't see that right now. So uh, in terms of, to answer your question, um, whether we have to take it back to the third party, uh, then perhaps we may have to do that too, so. Thank you, CEO Beverage. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through to Councillor Taylor and the whole of council. Um, I think this is always a challenge when we bring forward these, all the, the strategy where essentially it's not just next year, it's not, this is as Councillor Moore mentioned, we're, it's multi-year strategy. Um, if in the RFD we tried to articulate how refined we were going to get with regards to the strategy and as far as what we were going to tackle for 2024, really hitting the priorities and as we're doing our midterm check-in as well with strategic planning, et cetera, there's part of those discussions um, where 
we felt you know, from the perspective of going out to the community, um, meeting with our businesses, meeting with community groups on this, that this was was fitting with regards to what we heard. And so I think that's part of the challenge here is that um, there was a discussion during uh, committee, um, but there wasn't um, strong opposition. And this, this is why this came back in the way that it did. And so I wanted to just touch on that. So I, I will note, you know, it does appear um, definitely for you know, the overall strategy that this is a large piece of it, this can be adjusted, but it's just a matter of where, do, you know, where do we start again back with the uh, consultant to, to go back because essentially the feedback came from the individuals that, that fed into this um, strategy um, as well as with council as well. So um, my perspective, I think there is some, the, there's some really good pieces within this you know, it, it might be the, the fact about the recreation hub, and I, I hear what you're saying. I do. But I, if it's an action item, I guess I wouldn't want to throw away the entire strategy because I think there's a lot of good pieces here with regards to tourism and with regards to recreation-based businesses that potentially could benefit our community. That's just my perspective. Thank you. Councillor Taylor. Yeah, through the mayor to CEO Beverage. And as per the motion that I've made, it's, I'm not accepting that second strategy right now. I'm asking it to be reworked, right? There are pieces of it. You're right. There are pieces of it that work. You know, the, the tourism partnerships, absolutely. Um, but exploring the idea of community kitchen, garden, and food innovation incubator to support community health and food security initiatives, that, that's a tough sell right now. That is a tough sell to say that's where we're pushing to, you know, uh, trying to get people to, to move to Edson and um, uh, the, I say that and we, you spoke about the, the, the wellness hub that's a that's a tough sell a lot of these things that we have in our community many many municipalities have these things in our community to say that we're solely unique among other municipalities to have these things I just I don't I don't see that so so and as I said the motion is to to rework and adjust it take good things out of it um, and, and rework it. Maybe yes, bring it back to committee. Um, but the more the more I sat on this when we left committee of the whole, and I sort of I did question it then, and it's back for RFD tonight. The more I just it's hard for me to 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 sign off on this as it is tonight. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Council, any further questions, comments, or concerns? Um, so I also, uh, during committee, uh, I think the, the main piece in this in, entire economic development strategy that um, really I, I struggle with, much like Councillor Taylor, is exploring the feasibility of a wellness and recreation cluster near the hospital. Um, we have a lot of uh, health and wellness and recreation opportunities within our community uh, sprinkled throughout our downtown core. Tons of it, and and that's we were actually uh, recognized. Uh, I think it was during one of our reports on uh, community development and community services about some of the uh, collaboration and the work that goes on between these private businesses and and some of the public uh, offerings that we offer as a municipality. Uh, but to explore the feasibility of a wellness and recreation cluster near the hospital, I don't think is really should be a focus of ours. I think we should be making sure that our existing spaces that we have in our community are filled and, and, and looking at how to attract and, and, and retain uh, that in our community. That is the only piece of the uh, creating a regional hub for health and recreation um, that I have a very big concern about. Um, and these are all things that we're striving to become or, or, or looking at developing over time. It's not something that we're focused on tomorrow. Um, and as was noted uh, in uh, Ms. Roberts' presentation, there are key priorities that are going to be focused on in 2024 and 2025, which is really what we need to be concerned about at this point in time. Um, and it, with any strategy, they, are, they, they do become a little bit fluid as things change and, and dynamics change. So um, while I share many of the same concerns as Councillor Taylor, I don't think I'd be supporting his motion at this point in time. Um, just, uh, I would probably support removing um, objective 2.1 um, uh, from that, uh, but the rest I, I am supportive of. So um, that's, that's kind of where I'm at at this point in time. So, Councillor Sh 
Trenard. Um, so I'm understanding this. So we're going to pass the motion, or do we need a separate motion to pass? Because I'm hearing what you're saying. I agree with everything, and 2.1 is questionable. So I'm understanding Councillor Taylor's motion to pass it, except 2.1. Can we make that motion, or do we want to send it all back? Because I'm agreeing. I see 2.1. Actually, I should clarify with action item 2.11 is uh, the one that I have issue with. Uh, the rest I have no issue with. So uh, the motion currently on the floor, if you would like to repeat it, Councillor Taylor. Oh, uh, Amanda, Ms. Verboom is going to put it up on the screen for us. Thank you, Mayor Zahara. I'm just going to share my screen here. And if you can please let me know when that pops up for yeah, you. Yeah, we can see it here. So Does the that read? Yeah. So uh, the council accept the Town of Edson Economic Development Strategy with the exception of Strategy 2.11 uh, to be just and brought back at a future date. Was that your motion, Councillor Taylor? I don't believe it was. Go ahead, Councillor Taylor. Yeah, through the mayor. No, no. Um... It was the council set the town of Edson's economic development strategy with the exception of strategic direction number two, which administration review and adjust and bring Hold back. Up, slow down. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, the strategic direction number two. Yeah. Uh, which administration review and adjust and bring back to council. at a later date. All right, so the motion reads that council accept the town of Edson's economic development strategy with the exception of strategic direction number two, which administration review and adjust and bring back to council at a later date. So that is the motion on the floor. Um, do we have any other comments, questions or concerns on that? Um, Councillor Chachka. Uh, thanks. Uh, through the uh, the mayor to administration, uh, just some clarity on process here. So, if um, if we are not in favor of that, um, should we, we be asking for a friendly amendment um, to this motion, or decline it and um, proceed with the original one that was presented? Through to Councillor Chachka, if I may, Seal Beverage. Um, if, if we're not in favor of this, I would suggest that we defeat the motion and then somebody puts uh, an alternative motion on the floor, which may be the one that was included in the agenda package. Go ahead, Councillor, or sorry, CO Beverage. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just um, with regards to this motion, so um, Mr. Mayor, you're correct. Adjust and bring back to Council at a later date. That doesn't provide a lot of direction. That doesn't provide a lot of... Um, guidance so um, if we were able to bring it back we would bring back the same unfortunately because based on the information so I just want to make sure that we have clarity if we're if we're making any amendments we have to have whether we're referring back to committee is also a very good option um, if, if or th throw the whole thing back to committee and have a discussion about um, this strategy and then you're you're providing it back and we're not having part of a strategy approved. So we do have a motion on the floor. Um, so um, at this point in time, um, I would suggest that I think CEO Beverage made a good suggestion is that we defeat this motion. And then if Councillor Taylor, you'd like to make a, another motion to refer back to committee, I think that probably would be good so we could get further into this um, and finesse what we actually want to see. Does that sound good to council? All right. So, council, all those in favor? All those opposed? Motion <laughs> defeated. And Councillor Taylor? Uh, that I make it, I move that council um, direct administration to bring back the economic development strategy to 
uh, a future community of the whole meeting for review. No, no. Oh, it's good. Oh, sure, sure. Okay. It's good though. But, but the council uh, refer um, the town of Edson's economic development strategy to committee uh, for further direction. That's exactly what I said, right, everybody? Yes. Everybody's hearing that. Okay, good. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion on the floor that says council refer the town of Edson's economic development strategy to committee for further discussion. Does that work for you, CO Beverage? Yes. All right. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? That motion is carried unanimously. Way to make things interesting, Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. Thank you. Uh, can I get a motion, please, that Council approve an additional $100,000 for the 18th Avenue Rehabilitation Project for energy related activities to be funded from the energy reserve. Go ahead, Councillor Chouinard. I'll make that motion. Thank you. And uh, I believe uh, we have Armia McHale, our infrastructure manager, who will be presenting on this this evening. And I, and I uh, before Armia starts here, if any of you do want to leave or not, do you have other things you want to do, you, you don't have to stay for the entire meeting. Uh, you're free to, to go if you would like, or feel free to stay. We'd love to have you here as well. So thank you. Was it something I said? <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. I'm here to present uh, on the RFD regarding 18th Avenue Rehabilitation Project for uh, approval for additional $100,000 to fund the energy-related activities within the project. Uh, I'll give you a brief background about this project. Council approved originally $2.6 million for this project. When we received the bids, all the bids came higher than the approved budget. We came to council, presented on February 20th, requested $650,000 to cover for the lowest bidder, lowest bid price, engineering fees, and part of this request was $50,000 for energy related, which we were planning to have from the infrastructure reserve. Uh, based on my conversation with the finance department, with the GM, I learned that any energy-related activities or components should be funded from, as per our reserve policy, should be funded from the energy reserve policy. So here I'm requesting $100,000 to be approved as extra to the budget to be funded from the energy reserve. And the original 50,000 that we budgeted for, it will be added to our contingency for the project. If it's needed, it will be used. If it's not needed, it will be returned back to the infrastructure reserve. Uh, I will open Google Maps here just to give you a background of what's involved in this uh, energy-related activity.
So here I'm at the intersection of 18th and 48th. I'm heading west. So all these street lights on the south side of 18th will be removed prior to construction and it will be replaced with steel street lights. The cable running overhead between these street lights will be buried underground. And once we reach 49th, Just to make sure I'm clear in my message, this overhead cable running north-south on the east side of 49th, it will not be buried because it's a long stretch. It doesn't make sense that south of 18th, it's overhead. We go underground and go back overhead. So this will be another project we can contact Fortis for getting a price because if we add this to the current project, it will raise the budget way higher. However, any cables or wires running across 49th, it will go underground to make sure that the corridor of 49th is clear for any trucks or any high trailers. So, so far the two quotes we received from Fortis add up to $85,000. As I mentioned, the original estimate by consultant for this was 50,000. So, so far we have $35,000 above what was estimated. And we haven't received the quote from Shaw or tell us because these cables crossing 49s are also util other utilities. We will ask them to have extra conduit when they are excavating underground to have power, Shaw, internet, whatever underground. And we will be installing another new street light at the end of the cul-de-sac, pretty much in this location. We haven't received the quote for this. That's why the two quotes are adding up to $85,000. However, we're asking for $100,000 from the energy reserve. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. McHale, for your presentation. And you've answered all my questions. So, um, Council, do you have any further questions or comments on this? I'm glad that we are looking after cleaning that up while we're, we're doing the construction. I think that's really important. and be nice to have 49th clear those overhead lines removed there so uh council then i will call the question all those in favor that motion is carried unanimously thank you, thank you very much uh before you leave when is construction anticipated to start uh, we're talking about 18th we are expecting construction to start in the first half of june and since you mentioned this uh, also we were anticipating construction for the 10th ab and 54th app for the utilities upgrade first half of June. However, based on communication with some of the residents, they are worried about another rain event. So I'm currently communicating with the contractor and hoping to start construction end of April or beginning of May. Nothing is confirmed yet, but that's what we are pushing for. Okay. Thank you very much for you that. You are very Appreciate welcome. that. Thanks. Have a great evening. Thank you. Can I get a motion, please, that council endorse the town of Edson to join the advocacy efforts for increased regional community airport funding? Go ahead, Councillor Moore. I so move. Thank you. And I believe Ms. Vierboom is going to speak to this first. Thank you, Mayor Zahara. The Mountain View County is submitting a letter on behalf of numerous municipalities across Alberta to bring awareness to regional community airport funding. They have formed a municipal working group in hopes of collaborating with the province on increasing awareness and support for regional airports. We are asking that council endorse the town of Edson in joining these advocacy efforts. All right, thank you, Ms. Vierboom, and I'll uh, speak to this a little bit as well. So. Uh, Mayor Williams with Yellow County um, provided me with this information as it came up at RMA um, and suggested that we may be interested in joining this advocacy uh, piece. Um, so I'm certainly in support of it. It's something we actually just talked about in our budget here uh, a couple weeks ago and I sent the video of the airport runway which I'm very concerned about um, future down the road and the expense associated with um, you know replacing that. Um, it's a 
very important economic hub, a safety uh, a piece for us as well with STARS and our uh, forestry base here. So, um, yeah, looking for support to continue to advocate on uh, behalf of uh, smaller community regional airports that provide a lot of service to the province. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, I will call the question. All those in favor? That motion is carried unanimously. Uh, we have no information items, no sundry items. Council committee reports. Uh, we are going to go back to March the 20th, and we will start today with Councillor Chachka. Okay, thank you. Um, on March 21st, I had an uh, IRC meeting with West Yellow Head Community Futures, um, and uh, following that meeting, I had a regular um, Community Futures West Yellow Head meeting. And um, there are a few things were brought up at, at that meeting. So we did um, approve that uh, councillors would be required to have criminal record checks um, to serve on that committee, um, something that we, we discussed extensively at, at um, our Community Futures meeting. And, and then that was determined it was um, um, a very reasonable precaution, I guess I could say. Um, Another thing we brought up that we'll come back to all of our councils for ratification at some point this year is um, right now in our bylaws, um, it says that we could have, um, you know, a community member sitting on the board um, uh, and we feel that that's um, a, a bit challenging because it will, um, right now there, there's no budget to, to provide uh, for travel within the Community Futures uh, group and uh, we, would, we would not be able to actually have someone commit to that um, would be really hard. And uh, so we want to change that to that it would be uh, council members only um, being on the board, but that'll, that'll come back at a later date, just a heads up, um, because the people on the committee would be speaking on behalf of the municipality um, and it's, uh, they would have essentially control of the assets of the municipality as well. So um, anyways, that'll come forward later. And we also have the Edson Business Walk uh, Committee meeting on April 19th, if any councillors are interested in that. I believe it was sent out, sent out in your um, uh, emails. Um, and uh, I'm also now the chair of the IRC as well. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> Um, and then uh, March 21st, I also attended the 2024 operating budget uh, here. And on March 26th, I attended the land use bylaw info session. And uh, today, April 2nd, the um, YCE multiplex steering committee meeting as well. That's everything. Thank you, Councillor Trotschka. Councillor Schoenard. Okay. Um, oh, where's my date? Um, on March 21st, I attended the budget, and on March 26th, the bylaw open house. And that's it for my report. Thank you, Councillor Chenard. Uh, Councillor Bevan. Uh, March 26th, uh, land use bylaw information session at Best Western, and that's it. Thank you, Councillor Bevan. Councillor Moore. Yes, uh, March 21st, I attended the uh, budget meeting. And on uh, March 26th, I also attended the uh, land use bylaw open house at the Best Western. Good turnout. Thank you very much, Councillor Moore. And Councillor Pasichny. Yeah, on the 20th, uh, along with the mayor, I attended the Chamber of Commerce annual general meeting. On the 21st, the Town of Edson's uh, operating budget meeting. Um, I was away, so I didn't go to the land use. And on today, the YCE steering committee. Thank you. And Councillor Taylor. On March 20th, I attended our uh, library board meeting where we uh, passed our auditor's report. And uh, we got an update on donations as of, I think, yesterday in terms of the furnishing projects. We're up to $73,710 for our furnishings. Things are going very well. Uh, I think with another four grand coming in shortly, I think. Um, so we have a very giving community. I think we already knew that, and people are giving, which is fantastic. Um, also, quick update, we are looking at finishing this project in mid-May with the transition into, into getting into the building in June is what we're hoping at. Uh, still, obviously, lots of things in play, lots of things in flux, but 
I'm hoping maybe we're looking at a mid-June uh, to get the building open to the public. So that's fantastic. And they do have an online auction as they're fundraising for the their furnishings. Their online auction will be uh, uh, with Patterson Parts, and it's going to be starting on April 26. We got lots of businesses donating to the silent or to the online auction, so be sure to check that out. On March 21st, I attended the operating budget meeting, and on March 26th, the land use bylaw information open house. And I agree with Councillor Moore; it was a great turnout. Uh, I had lots of great conversations and learned learned a lot. Learned a lot and lots of lots of good comments. That's it. All right. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Uh, attended the Chamber of Commerce AGM on the 20th with Councillor Pasichny. Operating budget on the 21st. Uh, land use bylaw open house on the 26th. I thought it was fantastic to see uh, people coming out and engaging with that. I uh, really appreciated that. A lot of good conversations and comments and input and the uh, public hearing for that will be on Monday um, here at Council Chambers. It, it will be a special meeting. Um, and I believe, um, Mr. Kitlitz, they have to register for the public hearing. Sorry, I'm kind of putting you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Mayor, I, I think if, if Amanda is still on line, I'll defer to her to answer that because I'm not the legislative expert. I believe that's okay. the case. But, Ms. Uh, Beerboon? Thank you through the mayor to all of council. There is an option to pre-register and get on the agenda plan to speak. And then anyone who shows up can register to speak as well, but they would be speaking after those who are currently registered. Or they can send a letter in as well, right? Correct, yes. They can send a letter uh, through an email through to me at legislativeservices at edson.ca. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Vierboom. Um, and today, the YCE meeting, and that is my report. Uh, we have no financial items. Questions for media and public regarding items from this council meeting. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. Um, uh, you'll need to come up and uh, to the microphone. And if you wouldn't mind just stating uh, your name uh, for the record, please. Yeah, I'm Calvin. I've got a couple questions on that one. I'll just hit the microphone there, sorry. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Very good. Okay, a couple questions on that uh, first agenda, or the item that we talked about. Um, it used to be called an immigration, now it's called uh, development. But you talked about 120 people potentially coming. Is that what you said? There's a number 120 spoken someplace? Uh, that would be applications, I believe. Application, and, okay. And how many people will end up coming to town? It's all dependent on who's all approved. On, what? on who's approved and the. Okay, and how do you get the approval through the government? Uh, it goes through the provincial government and the federal government. Okay, yeah. and some of those questions, like okay, housing. We don't really have a lot of housing here, and if there's a hundred or whatever applications, if there's 120 uh, get uh, approved. Where do we put them? You guys have? Uh, we have, we, you know, we have a lot of rentals in our community. Um, and and uh, we have rentals, we have homes that are available. Actually, a lot of homes available for rent right now uh, with all the workers that have left town. We, we had over a thousand people here, as you are aware. Um, and there is uh, part of the process is to they have to have the ability to provide for themselves when they're here. Right. So. And now are those families, is that like 120 individuals or is that 120 as a like included in a family, like say five or whatever? So like I'm just wondering about housing and stuff because I know there's some housing, but not yeah. really a lot. And uh, part of it is vetting. Who's vetting these people? So that was one of the concerns in the when we first initiated this program. Okay. Um, 2022? Yeah, in 2022. COVID. That's why we suspended it. Um, so um, the, the provincial government have put a lot more regulations and rules in place in regards to that. So uh, one of the key pieces uh, for the application last time was that they have to have uh, supports in place in order to live in the community. Okay, yeah, I can understand that. Right? But I just want to, who does the vetting? Because yeah, it's is, not, there, it's, is there going to be a lot of vetting going on? Or is it going to be, well, this person said this person is good? And the employer is responsible for that. Individual. Okay, so if something goes south, the, the person that uh, sponsored them, it will be legally responsible for them. 
Yeah. For actions and everything like that? I can't speak to the specifics of that, so. So we really don't know. Is that what we're saying? This is a program that's available in 32 other communities. Yeah, Canada, I understand. So, but yeah. I've, I've been reading on the yeah. provincial stuff, yeah. yeah. So that's, okay. And according to the thing in the government, it's supposed to be skilled people. So we're talking, let's say not skilled as well, right? It's, they have to have a certain, it has to be for certain jobs. Um, and so service industry is a big sure. one for that. So, okay. yeah. Okay, well, give me some stuff. Thanks. All right, thank you very much, Calvin. Come on up. My name is Lexi Nash, and uh, I think this is really wonderful to talk about this, but are all these um, future people going to come to all the empty buildings on Main Street? We see all the things that aren't happening in Edson, and yet we're preparing for another uh, few years, and now we're in such a mess here. Our downtown is ravaged, and I think we should be looking at the development now instead of in a few years. And uh, it's terrible to see our community like this. And um, I know we can't talk about government, but how many people are going to survive this next year in Edson with the taxes? I'm not talking about our taxes, but with this carbon tax. I don't know if you know, I see people every day struggling horribly in Edson so just to pay their bills. I don't want to interrupt you, but so your question is like, what are we going to do to address? What, what are we going to do? Like, I mean, I, it's all nice to, to talk about futuristic and buildings and doing all this, but what about now? What What's happening now? Excellent question. So uh, that's why we have developed an economic development uh, position here. Um, and we have been actively engaged with uh, many um, businesses, many developers, we're changing our land use bylaw because one of the reasons why uh, we have un been unable to attract development um, is because it was very cumbersome to do business in our community. So we're going through that process and um, that's going to be wrapped up here in a few weeks. That's going to be a huge piece for us, um, ensuring that we have um, the avail uh, availability of workers. Um, you know, we had businesses start up here and they're like, we're not sure if we're going to survive because we can't find the workers. Um, so there's there's many different facets, and I, we can get into the federal carbon tax baloney um, and how it's how it's killing everybody. But at the end of the day, there's only certain certain things that a uh, municipality control. We can't control rent. We can control what we do as a community. Um, so we've been really focused on that and. Uh, it doesn't change overnight. I've been here, lived in Edson since 2003. We've had empty buildings that entire time I've been here, even during some of the highest economic times that I've seen in this community. So it's getting worse for sure. Uh, and it's not just here, it's rural communities all over the place. Um, so making sure that we are a place to do business and welcoming people and um, trying to be competitive. And that, I think, so. excuse me, I think that we need to be know what's happening before we start bringing all these people in because it's very unfair to immigrants if they really have no place to go and our businesses are closing down faster than they're opening. Have you walked Main Street lately? It's heartbreaking. Yeah. I've been here for 33 years and I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. And I've never seen people struggle like this and I'm, I've rented homes for years and worked with people. But this is devastating to our community. So I think we should look at now. I know we have to look at the future, but now is what's happening. Thank you very much, Lexi. Thank you. Anybody else with any questions? Uh, go ahead, please come up. State your name. Hi guys, um, my name is Hemat. Um, just wanted to know a few things uh, with that immigration program. Is there any um, cap or limit a business can apply? Because what happened in the past, um, a single business applied 10 people uh, and it was approved. And I have a feeling that was a reason, one of the reason it was stopped. Um, so are council taking those precautions this time, giving a cap to a business 
depending on their number of current employees or their revenue or is there anything in place adding to the Lexi and the um, other guy that would employ will be willing to provide that you know in writing that for at least in a year they will be looking after the accommodations and you know stuff like that where immigrants don't have to struggle when they get here so excellent question Hamad that would be a great question for Morgan as she develops uh, the criteria around around that mm-hmm. um, so I really encourage you to engage with her to make sure that and I think you probably included that with some of your conversations already just some of those concerns that you saw last time mm-hmm. yeah okay because it was a lot of abuse before yeah I know so f- because a few people a lot of the good people had suffered yeah absolutely so I want to see like what we have taken precautions this time if we start this program again yeah yeah so please please communicate with Morgan on that and so what we can do. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> well, you turn yourself off. There you go. That was already yeah. on. Oh, good evening, everybody. My name is Christy Williamson. Um, I, I don't know who this question is for, maybe for administration. I'm just wondering if um, part of the wage for the um, Alberta Advantage immigration program is paid for by the government. Um, so I probably could speak to that. It's, okay. uh, we already have administration positions within the town of Edson. Um, so we're just reallocating one of those positions on a part-time basis to assist uh, through this program. I don't believe that the government is providing any financial assistance in regards to that. Um, one of the things is, is the businesses applying uh, have to pay a fee, will help offset some of that cost so taxpayers aren't paying the full brunt of that. Okay, so then it, uh, the part of the wage isn't funded by taxpayers? That's correct. Okay. Um, part of it is not, because that, that fee will be going to apply to, to that. Okay. Um, I do have a concern, too. I'm just wondering about right now, it's pretty much impossible to find a doctor. So how are the new immigrants going to be able to find a doctor when they come? That is a concern for our community, too. That's why we're trying to actively recruit for, for doctors as well. Um, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a challenge for our community, but um, we also have to retain our businesses as well. So we're trying to find that balance. Okay. Um, and I'm just wondering, I know that you all had said that businesses are suffering and can't find um, workers, but is there a shortage of, of resumes at these businesses? Like, because there's lots of kids that are unemployed right now, too. So There is, uh, depending on the business, of course. Um, it depends on what, what the hours are. Um, a lot of kids can only work after school, not during the day, what have you. Um, so having, you know, working business myself, uh, the applications we're getting are few and far between. Um, so depending on what you're looking for, right? Um, the businesses that I've talked to have said that they have a very hard time uh, attracting employees, or if they do attract, say, uh, someone, then the first opportunity for a better, well-paying job goes they go for that job, obviously, right? So, uh, so to have some of that consistency, that's that's what we're hearing from the business community, particularly in the service and hospitality sectors. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? <laughs> Good evening. My name's Joanne Sobon. Uh, through the mayor, I'm not sure if. What Miss Williamson was, I don't think that was the question that she was answering. I'm what the, I believe that she wants to know if an employer hires one of a temporary foreign worker, do they get part of that worker's wage paid for? Oh, the or, temporary foreign yeah, workers. Yeah, these wage. in this pro, these programs that we're no, talking about. No, I don't know. So the employer's on the hook for the full wage. They're not getting any grant money no. from any government no, sources or no. anything like that for that. No, okay. it's purely, so. The, the, the program itself, uh, my understanding why it was developed here in Alberta, uh, particularly for rural communities, why it's called the Rural Renewal Stream, is there's such a shortage of workers because so many people have migrated to the cities 
And there's a lot of folks that have come over from other countries coming for Canada because of the opportunities here, and they end up in Toronto's and Vancouver's, where the cost of living is insane, and they don't have, they can't provide for themselves, right? So it, it, my understanding is the government developed this program to try to attract some of those people into those rural areas where the cost of living is less and to try to fill some of those labor shortages in, in rural communities in Alberta. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Yeah. But there was no, like, there's no subsidies to pay yeah, for. Yeah, that, that, that answers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, any other questions? Seeing none, uh, I'll take a motion to go into closed session pursuant to sections 24 and 25 of the Freedom of Information and Privacy Act. Councillor Taylor? I so move. Thank you. All those in favor? Motion carried. All right. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Motion for adjournment. Councillor Chouinard? I'll make the motion. Thank you. All those in favor? Motion carried. <laughs>